Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker once again. We are on the illustrious CB750 in Nighthawk. And uh, we're on yet another commute home on a different road this time, so you know it's a uh, new scenery. I can't always promise that will be a different road every time, obviously, because there's not that many roads uh, over here in rural East North Carolina. Um, today I'm going to talk about a topic which will probably ignite some passions uh, in some people, but basically it's one it's one that actually crops up a lot in comments and discussions that i would be part of online and that's our, our modern 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 road bikes uh too fast they do they have too much power for the road sorry let me rephrase because do they have the potential to be too fast i think is the best way to phrase it um because to me if i if i was to collect and, and collate all of this uh, the comments that i was to get it definitely seems to be more of a the potential to go super fast is is too much on a lot of road bikes now and i'm not going to say I, I agree or disagree until the end of the video i'm just going to lay out some some things that i personally have experienced um myself on in my my riding career uh, and what i enjoy most on the road um for instance so I suppose to just kick it off, you know, there's a lot of bikes out there that, um, you know, I would love to have, but it, uh, there's always that, that looking at them like I'm trying to figure out the use case. So like, for instance, if there was a Tuano that was kind of like, you know, like the GT Tuano, I suppose, the one with the, the panniers and all that. If there was one of those with like 130, 140 brake, a little bit cheaper, tuned a little bit more, tuned a little bit more reliably, say, you know, not, not just putting it, oh, wow, look at all those cars. I want some of those. Uh, yeah, tuned more for reliability rather than out and out crazy performance. And one thing that's, you know, really interesting to me is um, Ari Henning and Revzilla uh, and Zach did that comparison um, with the ZX-10R and the Tuano, and I think it was the Z1000SX, um, and the Tuano actually won around the track. Now, it wasn't as fast as other things as the ZX10, uh, which, I mean, you would expect, but the fact it was faster on the track, and it, again, granted it was a short track and stuff, it just goes to show how much power that V4 road bike has, because for all intents and purposes, it is an RSV4, just in a, a comfier frame, you know, a nicer package for road riding. Um, and, you know, the same as, like, the, the Triumph Speed Triple, uh, the Triumph, what is it, the, the Speed Triple with the, the fairing, I can't remember what that's called. Those are also insanely powerful bikes, and, again, would I buy any of those? Uh, uh, absolutely. Personally, yes. But do I understand, I suppose, where people are coming from when they mention that these bikes, in their opinion, have too much potential for power on the road? And I do, I understand where it's coming from. Particularly when you jump back on something like this CB750 from the 90s that really and truly is a CB750 from the 80s in all but name and age. It's, this bike is, is very, very part spin. It has a fantastic little engine that'll do everything you ever want it to do apart from go extremely fast um, and this particular bike also really could use a better braking system uh, in my opinion not that i've been caught out or anything it's just that i like to uh, it's probably me I, I like to brake hard into corners and whatnot so from my use case i would like better brakes on this thing um but at the same time i honestly feel i could put a set of throw over saddlebags on this thing you know a tail pack and tour quite happily uh, over most of America <laughs> and you know bring it home and do Ireland and Europe etc because it'll just keep going it has a pretty decent fuel range like 120 odd miles before I need to fill it up um, I think it's a 14 gallon tank or 14 and a half gallon tank for, for <laughs> I'm getting confused between my numbers it is a 14 liter tanker thereabouts and it does about 40 US MPG, um, which, you know, a safe place for me to be fueling is 120, 130 miles uh, on, the, on, the, on the dash. But at the same time, like I said, 
I could easily see myself using this for a lot of stuff um, quite happily uh, you know going forward because it's just a nice machine to be on it's a big comfortable seat etc but back to the point you know are modern bikes too fast there's there's not really much in comparison to this um, out there today you know something super simple with hydraulically adjusted um, valves so you never have to you never have to do valve clearances on this bike uh, you can just ride it and enjoy it forever um, and it was a back in the day it was a pretty cheap bike to buy and for me it was a pretty cheap bike to buy um, so you really have to ask yourself have we lost this have we lost this kind of do it all not crazy exciting in any particular way but do everything bike and um you know the more of these kind of older bikes that were made to do lots of things that i ride i do think we have uh to a degree you know the cbf 1000 was the same you know i know that new whatever it is the nt 1100 from honda i i honestly have no interest in it and i like i like my hondas uh this is my third honda i own i'm gonna say third honda that i own um and I, I mean, I like Hondas. I will probably buy more Hondas in the future. But at the same time, I do wonder, you know, what's the story with um, with this type of bike? With the, the, the likes of the CBF 1000. The CBF 1000 was as comfortable to me touring around as... Oh, look at the big bird. As commuting, um, as being on track. I commute on this bike. I will happily tour on it if it comes to it. And to be honest... I'd really like to give it a rip around the track, a shorter track, just to see how it performs. Because I think it could be a lot of fun, to be honest. It, okay, yeah, it's never going to tear your arms off, but it's so light and nimble. Um, and, and that's the funny thing is, it's actually not, from a weight perspective, it's actually not that light. It's a, it's a heavy-ish bike. Comes in just over 200 kilos, I think. Um, but it feels light. It's, it's really nimble, short wheelbase. That's what these UGMs are good at, you know. They have that little short, nimble, flicky wheelbase. And this, this is a is a lot. It's a lot of bike for most people on the road, unless you really want to get into the willy wave and, and uh, you know say, oh, you know, I have two hundred plus brake horsepower. When do you use it? That's that's my big question. And I, you know, I know people who have two hundred plus brake horsepower. That's really cool. That's cool. And that's cool. Oh, those are pretty. I need to come back and get photos of them. They're cool. I know friends and people who have, you know, those higher power machines. And, you know, if I was ever to go out with them on CBF and whatever else, I mean, 99% of the time, you keep up with them with ease on the road because you ride to the conditions on no matter what bike you have, it's when you hit straights and you can open it up a bit, that would cause you to obviously fall behind. But it also causes problems if you get caught doing that speed. Uh, for instance, in, in Europe, there's just freaking cameras everywhere now and uh over here you certain states have like the super speeder laws and i mean <laughs> let's be honest about it uh, 100 miles an hour on a modern fast bike it's not very fast if anyone's ever done that speed on a modern fast bike you know what i'm talking about it's not very fast i mean it's also not very fast on my 1996 jixer 750 It'll hold 100 miles an hour, no problem. Uh, no problem with stock gearing. So, you know, that's... Not that I ever did that when I wasn't on the track, I promise. <laughs> but, um, you know, that that's kind of where I get to the point of... It's like, well, what can you enjoy more? Can you enjoy, you know, a bike like this more? Where I can just... I'm just going to approach this corner. Don't kill me. I see you. Don't kill me, though. And you can just kind of... just just ride straight through it, like wee and over here okay granted right now i'm on some of the most boring roads created by man if it wasn't for the scenery the scenery is great um but you know the uh the corners the corners suck like you get some corners like this one you know this is fine it's a fine corner it's, it's okay but then you have lots of big straight sections like this too and they suck a little bit and also, I feel that it's happened a few times uh, on the way to work and on the way home. 
if you approach a corner and go through it too fast you panic people coming against you because they just assume you're going to crash because I don't know, maybe they've never experienced a corner properly before in their lives. Corners are great, we should all use them and make more of them. Make windy, twisty roads. Because, I mean, obviously right now my commute is very much about, you know, getting home in a reasonable time. But when you're just out, just riding your bike, or if you like cars and you're driving a nice car, then, I mean, you really don't want to get to where you're going too fast, because the whole point of you know like that enthusiasm that automotive enthusiasm whatever you want to call it oh that burned down or something did it i don't know weird there's a lot of old there's a lot of like crumbly buildings over here for a, a country that isn't that old um which is kind of crazy but anyway um where was i yeah so i mean yeah i don't know i can't remember what i was saying now to be honest i don't i don't really have a plan for these commute videos i just say them <laughs> to answer the question in my opinion um I don't think modern bikes are getting too fast or have the potential to be too fast. I, I honestly don't believe so. But I do think in the wrong hands they have uh, the potential to get you into a lot of trouble if you're not sensible with them. Whereas even the most unsensible person can kind of enjoy one of these, uh, like this CB750, because, you know, I can like put out onto the street and, you know, give it a good rev. I'm not going to because I'm in, in a, like a town. It could be, there you go, child walking, see? Now you'll be careful of the children. People, don't speed where there's li a likelihood, a high likelihood of people and kids out walking, because then you're just an ass, um, and no one wants to kill anyone. I don't know, maybe some people do, but they probably should be in jail. Um, uh, I don't know, some people, yeah. We won't get into that. <laughs> we, <laughs> we won't get into if we want to kill anyone. <laughs> I, I get myself in trouble with that one. But, um... You know, it's one of those things that, you know, in the wrong hands, you know, like a modern fast bike on the road, we'll, we'll get we'll get the wrong person into trouble. Especially since, you know, like if you blip the throttle on this, it uh, doesn't doesn't go very far, right? If you blip the throttle on a modern superbike, uh, it, it does. You go from, you know, 50 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour in the blink of an eye. And the problem with that is if you don't know the road you're riding on, uh, for instance, you could get yourself into a lot of trouble very quickly. You know, you could come across a corner that you weren't prepared for, etc. And you're going double the speed that really that corner is capable of. All because you went, uh, yeah, woo! Which is completely understandable. Uh, I mean, we've all done it. If you have a fast bike, we've, we have all done it. Um, but that, yeah, it, I, I think... So to put it into words... I do not think that modern fast bikes are too fast. Modern, modern, modern fast bikes have the potential to be too fast for certain people. Um, you know, there's a time and place like this road here. Oh, well, other than all the houses in front of me. But the sections of road out here that there is literally no one that you're going to hurt except yourself. And, you know, I've always said that. And I know Teapot One subscribes to the same thing. We talked about it before. The time and a place, um, dealio. There's a time and a place to go fast, and you really have to pick, you know, where that is, so you don't get yourself and others into trouble. Like right now, there's people around, there's cars around. This would be a bad time uh, to go really fast, a silly time to go really fast. So I just I wouldn't do it. But for instance, now would be fine. Other than the corner approaching, which I can see from road signs. So. Yeah, anyway, I'm going way off topic. And the other question that someone asked me was, you know, would I buy one of those bikes considering that you really only ever use 20% of, of what they're capable of? Uh, yes, I would buy an Aprilia Tuono V4 tomorrow if I could. Uh, or most of the Ducati lineup. Um, you know, or the the G GSX X1000 uh, or the... Yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of those fast bikes. But this here Gorilla... Uh, would happily buy Kazawaki that little bit of twang was just for you my friend You can go tell everyone I'm becoming an American America. I like discussing these things. I like bouncing them off people and if enough people comment on this one with interesting topics I may very well revisit this this topic um, And talk about it more in the future in that you know There's a lot of there's a lot of question marks over that because I know there's a lot of people get upset about it, but 
to finish off this kind of whole thing, I always, always get comments. Even now, after years uh, of releasing the videos on the Jixer, you know, people will comment and say, oh, this is the, my favorite bike I ever owned. It was the most fun to ride on road or wherever. Um, just because you could really actually use the bike and, and throttle it out and whatever else. And that bike is 127 brake horsepower or thereabouts from factory. The same with the Falco. I miss my Falco on a daily basis. That's like 118 brake horsepower. And it's, it was so much fun, so much fun. And we're still very capable of super fast speeds when you wanted it to be, but the point was, it's, it's comfortable operating range where you could really get on the throttle and have a bit of fun with just that little bit lower down, um, with just that little bit lower down than, than say modern super, 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 super fast bikes. And modern super super fast bikes also then have to have a lot of electronics and whatnot which by the way i am not against you know bikes with all those those electronics and whatever else allowing us to pump more power into them i am all for that because we get to pump more power into them <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm not saying i want to be a willy waver and tell everyone i have 300 brake horsepower uh, but also I'm absolutely fine with having 300 brake horsepower in a bike. <laughs> Provided the computer does the not killing myself with that power for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, off topic again. But the whole, the whole thing about that is, you know, some people really don't like electronics. And I think a lot of people feel that a lot of those bikes shouldn't have those electronics. But the fact of the matter is... There's a reason those were invented. It's allowing us to go faster. It's allowing us to push the envelope, etc., 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 etc. Now, do a lot of people want or need that for the road? Maybe not. But that is an entirely different discussion. And the thing is, that kind of what it all boils, that's what it boils down to for me, is that people who, you know, really want, um, like, a brand new bike and... Yeah. Oh. That was my gearbox weird um you know really really want uh so those people who really really want like a brand new bike and some of them feel that you know they're they don't want all the electronics but they still want that new bike with all the power maybe look at an older bike maybe look at you know something like this maybe look at an older jixer you know if you have money to spend and you want to spend it there's plenty of places that would happily refurb those bikes for you it's all doable you know what i mean uh, there's nothing impossible in this modern world Yes. Anyway, I have rambled enough about that. Um, and just as a final, final summary, no, I don't think modern bikes are too powerful. No, I don't think modern electronics that allow us to push the envelope as much as we are currently pushing it. And I say we as a... Well, it's not me. <laughs> as much as modern bike engineers are pushing it, I, I think all that's good. And if you want a bike like this for the road, then buy a bike like this for the road you don't have to buy a new one so there's options for everyone out there and that's always a good thing i would i would like to see just because a lot of people want to buy a new one all that i would like to see manufacturers working within regulations because they have to and um, make a few more kind of cut down trim down options for people that don't have all the um, the extras that add cost etc something like this something that's simple as that you know has your hydraulically adjusted valves oh they're all doing their picking um you know that's that's the big thing is why do more bikes not have hydraulically adjusted valves in in modern bike culture uh, that's a another video for another time but yeah that's that's kind of where my brain is sitting at in that no they're not too fast but also more options that are simpler and cheaper might be a good thing going forward so I don't know do any manufacturers ever listen to that but that would be cool that would be cool um you know a return to simple ass cbs honda would be cool throw the nt in the bin give us a simple simple cb that would be nice anyway uh if you watch thank you very much for watching as always a massive thank you to my patrons uh i know i say it all the time but I will never stop saying it because it'll never stop being true that I do massively appreciate your support. And will do until um, the sun stops rising, etc. When Cthulhu rises from the seas and claims us all back, as is his duty, his 
prerogative. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. And yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you watched this far through my rambling nonsense, adios. Outro crew. If you were to buy a bike brand new, um, what kind of power range would you look at? Or does that even come into come in factor into the equation? It, are you chasing a power number <clears throat> or do you care? Is it more about how the bike looks and rides? And for me, it's definitely mostly about how the bike looks and rides. Um, but I'm going to be doing a video on why I didn't buy the KLR soon. And a lot of it comes down to I drove on these roads over here and realized it might not have the power that I would want to keep up with a lot of the stuff I wanted to do uh, on longer tours and stuff. So that was that was a little bit of a wake up call, etc. So yeah, anyway, would you look at that little power figure or do you care? Let me know in the comments. Bye, Outro Crew. Also, welcome back 360 cam. Yay. A corner. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> this is now my favorite road home because it has that one corner. I am not ashamed to say. Thank you. Nice, bu very nice bike. <laughs> oh yeah. Very nice. Yeah, you too. Have a good one.